Welcome to Simplify Pharma. In this lecture, we will discuss the step 2 of quality by design. How the concept of critical quality attributes was developed, what does it mean and how it is beneficial for pharmaceutical industries. An effort has been made to simplify it further. So please like and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the new video updates. If you remember in my last video, we saw the step one for execution of QBT that was to define product profile. Now, how do we define product profile? How do we design a product profile? It is on basis of two things based upon the patient needs and the labeling condition. So on that, based upon that, there are two types of product profile. One is target product profile, which we called as TPP. And the second one is quality target product profile, which we called as QTPP. And if you remember, the TPP constituted of the entire information about the drug, starting from usage information, indication, administration, dosage form, strength, contraindication, precautionary warning, adverse reaction, overdose information, then uh, uh, information about clinical and non-clinical pharmacology, clinical studies, references, information about storage, handling, and also about the patient counseling. Then the difference between TPP and QTPP, wherein TPP constitutes the entire information about the drug product, starting from description till the clinical studies, the entire information. On the other hand, the QTPP, it constitutes the information that is related to the quality of the drug product, the characteristics that can affect the quality of the drug product. So we can say TPP constitutes the, of the overall information of the drug product and QTPP constitutes of the factors that can affect the quality of the drug product. The components of QTPP they are further subdivided into critical and non-critical. Critical factors, they are based on the severity of harm to a patient's safety and efficacy resulting from failure to meet the quality attributes. So if the quality attributes, we fail to meet the quality attributes, how much harm they can cause to the patient based on that, we define the critical and non-critical factors. For example, if the dissolution properties are say or the content uniformity, if there are variations in these properties that will that can cause harm to a patient, whereas the odor, the appearance, the physical factors, you know, if there is any change in the physical factors, the severity of harm to a patient that won't be much severe. See, when we talk about strength and dosage form, obviously dosage form it uh, dosage form is constant it is fixed there cannot be any variation in the dosage form also the strength of the product that is also fixed there cannot be any variation that's why they come under non-critical factors so the components of qtpp they are again subdivided into variable and fixed variable elements they may have a range of acceptable values as we can see, dissolution properties, SA, content uniformity, there is a range because these uh, elements, they vary based upon other factors. Whereas the strength, dosage form, these are the fixed factors. The strength is not going to change. The dosage form is not going to change. So coming to the step two of QBD approach, that is to identify CQA, critical quality attributes. Once we are done framing the QTPP, the second step involves identifying the important quality ca characteristics of the drug product, which can be useful in regulating the consistency in product quality. And there comes the picture of CQA, that is the critical quality attributes. It includes critical parameters that are likely to change based upon variations in raw materials and processes. So CQAs are nothing but subset of QTPP. We have to identify a CQA based on the severity of harm to a patient, patient safety and efficacy 
resulting from failure to meet the quality attribute so based upon this we identify a cqa the potential varieties of cqas include the physical attributes chemical biological microbiological attributes of the product and they are usually kept within appropriate limit or within appropriate range distribution to ensure the desired product quality and they directly affect the product quality that's why they are critical quality attributes there can be critical quality attributes for drug product drug substance intermediates excipients cqas are subsets of qtpp and they have potential to be altered by change in formulation or process variables let's take a simple example qtpp may include additional quality attributes of the drug product such as strength and dosage form which are not part of cqa why because they will not change during drug development process the dosage form for example we are making a paracetamol tablet of 500 mg see there can be other variations there can be variations in raw material there can be variations in excipients the process that we use but the tablet won't change into injectable we are going to manufacture paracetamol tablet that is fixed we are going to manufacture paracetamol tablet of 500 mg that's a strength that is also fixed so these two things are fixed other things variation should not bring any change to these two things that's why they are not cqa however the qtpp attributes such as sa content uniformity dissolution permeation flux they can be cqa why because they may be altered by formulation or process variables other factors can bring change or variations to these factors that's why we can consider them as cqa as per ich guideline q9 we identify cqa through risk assessment but also we require prior product knowledge or some lab data non clinical clinical data that is also that also helps in making the risk assessments cqa cannot be controlled directly but indirectly through input factors such as cma and cpp that is critical material attributes and critical process parameters now let us see over here this is an example for example this is a list of qtpps now how are we going to identify cqa from this list first is dosage form it won't change route of administration that will also not change strength that will also not change weight even though it can change because of uh, change in any raw material excipient but the harm that it can cause to the patient is not much then comes the pharmacokinetics appearance identity all this the harm that is caused to the patient is not much then what do we consider as cqa impurities dissolution properties as say content uniformity if there is any variation in these factors that can cause harm to the patient so they come under very critical factors and that's why they are they come under the cqa category now let's take a simple quiz to understand whether you all have understood the concept of critical quality at now i will flash few factors you have to take pause the video take a notebook divide into two columns whether it is a cqa or not a cqa i will flash few factors and you have to write it down under whether it is a cqa or whether it is not a cqa let's start and then after that i will flash the result and you can check whether you have understood the concept or not so let's start the quiz order you have to write it down uh, in between the two uh, columns whether it is a cqa or not appearance think carefully dissolution properties strength dosage form sa 
content uniformity so this is the result you can check your result whether you have understood the concept of critical quality attributes so as you can see over here order appearance strength dosage form they are not cqa whereas dissolution properties sa content uniformity api level these are cqas now let us understand why if you consider odor appearance these are likely something that if they fell out of a certain range or a certain limit they are likely not going to cause any harm to a patient however if the active ingredient level is decreased or increased or if there was an increase in degradation product or the dissolution properties are changed of the product all of these could potentially impact how the drug works in a patient and could potentially cause harm to the patient so that's why all these would fall in a category of cqa now this is another example how a cqa document looks like there will be key columns like this in which the first column is which all QT, qtpp elements are there what is the target what is the justification for that now this is one i have pulled up from the fda website here the author has outlined different elements that they are concerned about in the qtpp then they have a column for what is the target goal for that element then they have also put in a justification why did they choose that target and as you'll see in the qtpp elements most of these really focus on things that are related to the drug product itself so focusing on things like stability of the product or different quality attributes such as physical attributes identification of the product it also focuses on things like container closure system which would be really important not only for drug stability but also for ease of use by the patient and as you can see there is one column whether this qtpp is a cqa or not so physical attributes like appearance odor size they are not cqa whereas assay content uniformity dissolution they all fall under the type of cqa then we can see residual solution degradation product they all are cqa one more case study we'll see this again i have pulled up from the internet wherein this is a research article quality by design based formulation and evaluation of fast dissolving tablet of aspirin and as you can see over here the cqa profile these are the factors and whether they are considered as cqa or not and they have given justification for that physical attributes color odor appearance no they are not considered as cqa justification physical attributes of the formulation are not directly linked to the efficacy and safety then we can see hardness disintegration yes yes they are considered as cqa why because hardness will affect friability disintegration dissolution that can impact the bioavailability both formulation and process variables affect the hardness so you can see on what basis we can consider a particular attribute as cqa or not there is a justification that we have to give for that there is one more research paper that i have pulled up from the internet this is again uh, for a meco adhesive extended release tablet and as we can see over here uh, the physical attributes they are not considered as cqa except the hardness since it is a meco adhesive extended release tablet that may affect the disintegration that's why then other than that drug content dissolution meco adhesion time all these are cqas and there even the justification is given for that then for the drug substance and for drug product for example the paracetamol drug and the paracetamol tablet how a cqa is written for both this is given in this table so this was all about critical quality attributes please like and subscribe to my channel and in my next video we will discuss the next step thank you thank you for watching